Hi, I'm Murphy, and this is my channel, Murphy's Every Whim, where I talk about books, because I love to talk about books. And in the past few days, I have clearly loved to write about books. I wrote, uh, when I printed it out, it came out to seven pages about the two books <laughs> that I just finished for Shorty September. That's a lot of writing. One of those books is Women Without Men by Shanush Parsipur. And I will just say right off that I will probably mispronounce names, but I am using a romanticized uh, transliteration of the Persian and I hope that it is as phonetically accurate as it can be so that I don't screw up too much. I did a little bit of research on how to pronounce things. but So uh, this book, Women Without Men, has a subtitle, A Novel of Modern Iran, and it was written in, uh, if you think I would know this, it was it was published in 2011 in English, and I believe it was uh, written in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s. I'll have to check that out and put it, you know, uh, as a, a caption here below. But anyway, um, this was written by a woman who lived in Iran, and. When she wrote it and published it in Persian, she was then, the book was banned in Iran, and she was then imprisoned, not once, but twice, for her depiction of virginity, women's lives, sexuality, and that sort of thing in her book. I've actually read this, uh, gosh, at least twice now, and in the past few days. Um, once I read it, just to get a feel for it, and then I read it trying to keep track of everything. And then I fell into a rabbit hole looking up information for this book, and I went down a lot of different ways. I want to start by talking about the characters, because... So recently in another booktube video, I heard someone mention some books that were plot driven and some books that were character driven. And it's just another uh, way for me to know that I don't know that much about, I don't know as much about literature as I'd like to think I know, even though I've taken a lot of literature classes and I've read a lot of literature. I don't know a lot of things and I'm not sure what is meant by those two things plot driven or character driven but I would say that the books that I have read recently or for Shorty September have mostly been character driven and for that reason I was eager to make a list of the characters and their relationships but this book is mostly about five women, their life in a relatively short period of time. We get some background about what happened to them prior to this time. But mostly this, uh, it seems to me it's 1953, 1954, 1955, if I've got my timeline right. And in 53 was when the CIA and MI6 led uh, coup d'etat happened that ousted the democratically elected prime minister in order to go back to the monarchy and the Shah. And the prime minister at the time, he was only in for a few years, he had made uh, strides in giving women some rights. They could vote in regional elections. 
They had access to insurance that they hadn't had before, and they lost those. So five main characters. Uh, the first one is uh, Makdok. And Makdok is only in the book at the beginning in a short little piece, and we don't learn that much about her, at least as much as we learn about others. But she is a teacher, she's not married, and she's a virgin, which whether someone's a virgin or not seemed to be an important aspect of describing the person. Um, but in the respect that it tells us where they are in the social structure. She taught, she was a vice principal, and her principal asked her out on a date. And for that reason, she quit her job. She wanted to safeguard her virginity so strongly that she couldn't be around even the suspicion that she might have some relationship with a man. And so she goes to her home, she hangs out with her brother and his kids, and at one time she says, my virginity is, a, is like a tree. And so she planted herself and became a tree. And here's at the point where I should tell you, yes, there is magical realism in this book. Uh, and I might talk about that later. I can't decide what I want to talk about in this video because there's just so much. I could talk about this for a long time. I wrote four pages about it. I, I could talk a long time about this. So, Makdot, virgin, becomes a tree. The next woman that we meet in the story is Faisa. And Faisa is, um, she has a brother who's married and she has these social battles with her sister-in-law about who can have the more lavish dinner parties and who's the better cook. And Faisa is, has a crush on, for lack of a better word, and by the way, Faisa is a virgin and she also strongly safeguards her virginity because she thinks she can't achieve um, the marriage with her love interest as she wants if, she's, if she doesn't maintain her virginity. And her love interest is Amir Khan. And Amir Khan lives with his sister. And Faisa and Amir Khan's sister Munas are, re, are good friends. And so on a day in August of 1953, with riots and battles out on the street, when it's dangerous to go out on the street, Faisa goes to visit Munis. And in that discussion, Munis finds out something about female anatomy that she didn't know. Faisa told her something about, well, Faisa is pretty vindictive, and so she's bad-mouthing her sister-in-law and has nothing good to say about her, and Munis is just listening and letting her friend talk. But at one point, Faisa mentions that the vagina is an orifice, and this is something that Munis hadn't thought about. And Munis, who is also a virgin, this is shocking to her. Absolutely shocking that she didn't know this biological fact and she didn't understand what it meant to her. So she left the house in the midst of all the riots and violence going on outside because of the coup and put herself in a position to be killed. Munis is killed. She goes off, and uh, while she's dead, she comes back to life, so to speak, and she wanders around Tehran for a month. 
And while she's wandering around, she finds a book on sexuality at a book vendor's uh, table. And I, I picture this like the book vendors in um, Buenos Aires when I was there, that there were this, on a plaza, there would be people with tables and used books just laid out. So that's the image I have in my mind when Munis picked up this book on sexuality. She goes and she reads it and learns a lot that she didn't know. And so she goes back home. And because her family thinks that she's been out gallivanting in the streets, having sex, whatever pe women do when they're not kept at home, um, they kill her again and bury her in the backyard. Later, Faisa comes back to Munis' house. She finds out she's been killed. She digs her up out of the backyard, brings her back to life again, and the two of them decide to leave and they head off to Karaj. And they have some bad times along the way. All right, so that's Munis and Faisa. They're on their way to Karaj. The third, the fourth woman, it feels like the third because uh, Munis and Faisa are always together. And this one I am going to stumble over and I apologize. Mrs. Farklaka Saradin Gochere. And Farakla is her, the name people would call her, her friends would call her. And her nickname is Farok. So, Farouk, she's married to um, Gochere, and uh, she calls him, and I appreciate that there are some nicknames here, she calls him Sadri. So, uh, Farouk and Sadri are married. Sadri used to work, and that left Farouk a lot of time to do the things that she wanted to do, but now he's retired, and he's around the house all the time. Sadri still thinks of Farouk as beautiful, even though she's 49. And, uh, but he has had affairs, she has had affairs, and there's this hostility and iciness in the um, household, and they just don't get along. They're well-to-do. Uh, Sadri has a lot of money. And one day, Sadri dies. He dies in an accident. And so Farouk gets money and she can now do what she wants because she's not a virgin. She's been married. She has much more freedom to do the things that she wants than uh, Makdok. Munas and Faisa were able to do. And so she decides to buy a house, a villa in Karaj with a beautiful garden. And when she gets there, she finds out that one of the trees in the garden is actually a woman who planted herself there. And that's Makdok. And so that's where Farouk and Makdok come together. All right, the fifth woman is Zarankola, Zari, and I'm gonna call her Zari. Zari is a prostitute. She's been in the business, so to speak, uh, since she reached puberty. And um, she's in a, a house uh, run by a madam who's not very nice to her. Zari is very funny, and she makes all the other girls laugh. Um, but she's not, I mean, she's not a girl anymore. She's in her 20s, so she's older now. She has to service 20, 30 men a day. I just cannot imagine. 
And so, yes, she wants to leave, but she doesn't know how to leave. And so one day, um, she's told she has a guy. And so she goes to her room, gets ready. The guy comes in, he has no head. And in fact, from that time on, no men have heads. And Zari's a little concerned about this. She wonders if it's something that just she sees or anyone else sees. And so she actually tells uh, there's a new girl and she tells this new girl and this new girl says, well, you should pray about this. So Zari leaves and goes to a bathhouse and has the woman there scrub her five times in hopes that she could finally be clean enough to pray. And then she goes to a shrine, but the shrine isn't open. And sometime during the night while she's waiting for this shrine to open, she asks someone, where can I go to get a breath of fresh air? And they say, Karaj is a good place to go. So it turns out that all five women meet up in Karaj and that would be the end of what, although the book isn't broken out in part one, part two, and part three, it clearly has a distinction. There are the things that happened before the women meet up in Karaj, the things that happen at the villa and the garden in Karaj, and then the aftermath. What happens to these five women after? There's so much to talk about here. Of course, there would be things to talk about the women's relationships and how they interact. It says women without men, but really, they're not without men ever. At the villa in Karaj, they have a gardener who's, who goes by kind gardener, who has brings a lot of the magical realism into the uh, story. Uh, he takes care of Makdok uh, in the garden and helps her thrive as a tree. And so, you know, there's a man there. It's the five women and a man. And actually two other men come. They were uh, Farouk's uh, servants before and they come to help out. So it's, it's not that there aren't men around. And yes, Sadri and Farouk had a bad relationship. But that doesn't mean that Sadri doesn't feel like there could be a good relationship with men. And in fact, she had a good relationship, at least she thought she did, with her lover while she was married. In the aftermath, uh, some of the women get married or have relationships with men. And the men depicted are not necessarily bad men. So Munus's brother kills her, but he does so to protect the honor of the family. And uh, I won't argue about whether that's a real tradition or not. It's at least something that that was expected. Other people told him that was a good thing for him to do and so on. Um, Faisa's brother was an okay guy. Um, there are some bad people. Um, there are some men who take advantage of Munus and Faisa as they're going to Karaj. Um, and so the men in the story are some good, some bad. Of the five women, they're not all angels. Um, Farouk is very ambitious. Uh, Faisa is vicious. She badmouths people. She will tell lies about people so that others will hate that person. So there are good people, bad people. Not The good and bad is not divided by gender. So... I could, I could go on. I Like I said, I, I wrote four pages and I really got involved with this book. In fact, I had to tell myself, I have to stop. Stop the madness. Get off the cart and go do something else. In fact, read your next book. And so I did that. 
In the reviews, I found out some people had difficulty with women without men. And part of that could be because the names are confusing. There are names, um, at least four of them start with an F, and so that gets confusing. And so uh, I can see how that's a problem. We also have nicknames for people. Is that a nickname or is that a new person? Um, and the names are unfamiliar to, the, to those of us who, who speak English, and so um, they're sort of a little hard to keep track of. If you're worried about that, on my blog I have a list of characters, and I don't tell you anything on the blog past what I've told you on here. I really don't like uh, giving the entire plot. I just like to set things up, and I hope that I'm able to do that without telling too much. Um, and so on my blog is a list of characters, not just the five women, but all the characters that I ran across that I felt needed to be in there. There were maybe one or two people mentioned that don't have a main heading, but show up underneath someone else, else's heading. So if you're worried about that, I've got you covered. Some people may have problems reading this book because of the magical realism. And I just want to say, get over it. I was raised to believe that the bread and wine at Mass, that I went to Mass six days a week, that the bread and wine became the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I had magical realism as almost a daily part of my life. Uh, Ovid's Daphne turned herself into a tree. So if you have any affinity for Greek mythology, you're already involved in magical realism. I, I just say get over it. It's part of cultures and we should learn about those cultures authentically, not westernized. All right, so again, it's afternoon, <laughs> as always. It's my time of day, I guess. And it's uh, mostly cloudy, a little stormy, a little windy outside. It's, I hope we do get some rain. Uh, of course, Iowa is still part of the Midwest drought. And that's all I have to say today. I only spent it's 33 minutes on the clock right now, but uh, awfully long time to talk about one book. But that this book just was that much. So I hope to see you next time. Take care. One of those books is, so there's so much I could talk about here. Um, there's a <laughs> wasp eyeing me outside the window. In the reviews, some people had difficulty with women without, a difficulty, <laughs>